Hey guys, so I am a verified educator on an academy and along with that I am also available on the Unacademy Plus platform where I am taking live classes along with other educators. So in case you are interested in attending the live classes, you can subscribe to the Unacademy Plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETI and that will give you 10% discount. All right. And in case you are not interested in attending the live classes, you can watch the free courses that are available on the Unacademy. For that, all you need to do is go to the Unacademy website or download the Unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is ACT. Once you do that, you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the Unacademy platform. All right. Now let's begin with the video. Hey guys, a very good evening to all of you. So today is going to be a very important topic because it is a very important decision of your life that how to choose a PhD supervisor, right? So I'll be, I'll not go in a hurry. I'll explain each and every point and I've jotted down all the points right in front of me so that I don't miss any important point, right? But in case you feel that there's some important point that I have missed out, you can let me know down in the comment section, right? Now, uh, I have got the request for making this video a multiple amount of times beforehand also, but I refrain from making this video uh, because I believe that until and unless you have sufficient experience in a particular field, um, you should refrain from making that video, right? So now I believe that I have sufficient amount of experience that I've gained through my own experience and through others experiences as well so uh, most importantly you should know that the, your guide or whom, whomsoever you're choosing uh, first of all um, if I talk about they shouldn't have many retractions okay now what exactly is a retraction retraction is basically when you send a particular research article and it gets published okay it's gets published in a particular journal and then it's retracted because of some reasons right uh, if the reason is genuine uh, due to some error in the calculation or something then it's fine but then there are some errors like manipulation and recently you might have heard about the case in IS, IISM uh, IIT Dhanbad right so in IIT Dhanbad there was a case where 15 or 20 research articles were retracted from a particular author so you should avoid going to uh, such labs right uh, where there are a lot of retractions and frequent retractions now how would you come to know that you know retractions are happening or not there's a website called retractionwatch.com i'll give you a link down in the description box from there you can choose the ge uh, geographical region like india and then you can see that whether uh, who, who all are getting the retractions frequently right so you can check it out from that particular website and the second most important thing sexual harassment right um so over there what you can do is sometimes there are some things don't come out you know in the open right they don't come out in the website they are they're contained in the department so whenever you're going for the interview right and you have some doubts about a particular professor um, you should ask their students okay because or you should ask uh, people in the department because they would be knowing the uh, real scenario right sometimes um, some professors are very influential and sometimes you know some fake cases are also made so you the only way that you can actually know whether you know to truly believe these rumors or whether they are actually true um, that you can only find out once you visit the department so when you go for the uh, phd interview you can interact with your fellow friends if you have friends in that department or you can just interact with uh, you know people who you might be knowing right there's a lot of connections you might be knowing someone who might be knowing that department so you can go meet that person and you know get an idea about the department or what are what is the reputation of professors right so you shouldn't just believe the articles you should also go there uh, in person and find out whether those uh, cases or those rumors are actually true or not and in case you find that yes this is there then obviously uh, i mean it's uh, it's too obvious to tell you that you shouldn't join that particular lab right even though i don't know how good that professor might be but obviously it's very obvious that you should avoid that particular lab right now coming on to so these two things these are very important things and you should never join those labs these two things retractions and you know obviously sexual harassment um who have a lot of cases and you are know that once you have gone to the lab that yes um you know or you have talked to people in the department and they say yes th those rumors are true then obviously avoid those labs right now coming on to how to you know how to see which profile first of all you want to go to so um if i talk about publication so generally people talk about publications and they look at impact factors impact factor is the is one of the most common way to look at the quality of a journal um i do not believe in that but right now i'm not that established to actually pass opinion opinion on that particular topic i have so many topics uh 
uh, where, where I want to discuss with you guys, but um, I feel that right now I'm not ready for those topics, right? So in, in future, I'll definitely be discussing about more PhD topics. Uh, but right now, so impact factor is one of the most, uh, you know the higher high impact factor journals are the most sought after and they are uh, regarded as very high standard journals right so um, like journal of american chemical society and you want um chemcom you know organic letters so these are the repu uh, these are very reputed journals um then nature and science are also there so uh, now so you when you look at the publication so you can go to google scholar and you can look at the publications of a particular professor and you what you have to see is first of all you can click on the year there's a there's an icon called year so if you click on the year the recent publications come first so you have to see how frequently is the professor publishing the articles frequently okay one one of the criteria is this frequency is one of the criteria again this is very debatable because uh, some people who are working on a very uh, or on a very niche subject or on a subject which requires a lot of understanding of the subject and requires a lot of years of dedication they might not be studying that you know they might not be publishing that frequently right but i'm just talking about the general criteria uh, generally when you see uh, uh, a professor professor's profile you see at the recent publication so this is a general criteria i'm telling about but yes there are some professors who are not publishing frequency they uh, frequently they publish in two to three years but their work is excellent right so this this i will leave on you to judge that how you have to go right so you can look at the recently published articles and you can have a look at the quality of the articles right uh, and Sometimes what happens, students get con uh, influenced by the publications that they have done in their postdoctorate research. Now their postdoctorate research might be in very good labs, right? So there are professors who do very well abroad, you know, where, where the labs are already established. So they over there, they get uh, publications in nature and science. But once they are back in India and they get a position, right, they um, suffer a lot to establish the lab, right? So don't go by the past profile go by the recent profile that's what i meant by looking at the recent publications go by the recent profile don't get influenced by the past profile so there are a lot of things that happen in the past which could be because of so many reasons maybe their phd guide was good or maybe in the post doctorate they got into a very well established lab which was already publishing nature and science articles so you know over there they were it was i would not say easy but it was uh, still okay for them to publish over there but once they come back and they establish their own lab and you know then they then it's the real test then you come to know that who is actually a really good guide right so look at the recent publications that's what i meant by that right um then the next thing is how many grants they have right how frequently how many projects they have how how good funding they have because if they don't have good funding then how will they provide for you right by provide for you means your chemicals um you know your um, your equipments whatever you would require for doing your research okay so that partially depends on the on the supervisor and partially depends on the um, institute where you are working in right so like iits have very good funding so they, they have central instrumentation laboratories where you know all the uh, expensive equipments like you know single crystal xrd um raman uh, raman analyzer then you know um nmr you know so all these expensive equipments whatever there might be you know lcms and solid state peptide synthesizer so all the expensive equipments they are there you know uh, which are common to all right so it partially depends on the, your um, guide and partially depends on the in uh, you know the institute which you're joining in right so if your institute is very well, well funded whichever you're joining in then obviously um you know um it it, it is going to be a relatively easy for you to uh, work over there right then uh, what else would I talk about? So yeah, grants, like I was saying, so this comes under the grants. And then obviously you should choose a professor uh, who, who like, you know, if you have past research experience or if you're interested in a particular research field, you should join that particular professor as well, right? I mean, there's no point of choosing um, a professor from some other field, right? Until and unless you don't have your own fellowship, then you might be forced to join a, uh, a different, um, you know, field of rather than the field that you are interested in, right? So, but you should be clear about that. I have a friend who um, wanted to do PhD in electrochemistry, and uh, so she, uh, when she went for the interview, she was clear that she wanted to join a professor who was working in the field of electrochemistry, right? So either you be clear that you if you have to join a particular field you pitch 
to that professor only in the interview that i want to join your lab only right and then you do your research okay in fact i was going through this um, uh, some uh, so i was going through the internet once and i just a few days back i found this uh, really good quote that do some research about your supervisor before doing research with your supervisor right so just do some research about your supervisor right so we talked about retractions we talked about um, sexual harassment cases then we talked about publications in publications the frequency of publications the recent publications what are the quality of the articles that they have published um, then it could be about um, then as like I told you funding and the institute where you are joining in your field of interest right um, then we are then okay one more thing is collaborations okay so you should see that how frequently is your professor collaborating with professors from other institutes and professors from abroad because that uh, kind of makes it uh, like again i'll say post doctorate okay when after your phd when you do post doctorate a lot of it dep depends on the recommendation of your guide and the quality of work you have done right so quality of work also matters but the recommendation of your guide also matters so if your guide is well connected he has a lot of co collaborations abroad it is relatively easier for you to get a post doctorate okay and the second thing is that if he has a lot of collaborations you can you know um, for some particular uh, research topic that you want to work on that you know you can't be good at everything so let's say you want to learn a particular technique so you can go abroad for three four months you can have an experience of how it is uh, working in a foreign institute and then come back and do your phd right so uh, this is a very good uh, advantage of joining professors who have a lot of collaborations that you get to experience uh, research in foreign institutions even though you are doing a phd in india right so you get the experience of both the fields of both the both the worlds basically right then okay one more question that i get often is that uh, you know whether uh, sh should we join an assistant professor a associate professor or a full professor right so uh, i am of the belief that uh, associate professor is one of the best and the reason is quite simple right full professors um they have done a lot of work they are well renowned okay i'll tell you the advantage of full professor they are well renowned they have well established labs um they have all the equipments that you might require but the problem is they are not able to give you time right the opposite happens with assistant professors with the assistant professors they are new to the field okay they have a lot of time they would teach you each and everything they would focus a lot on you especially if you if you are their first or second phd they will focus a lot on you they'll give you a lot of time um but over there they wouldn't wouldn't have the, those well established labs they would still be stab establishing themselves in the field so you know over over there you have some issues right uh, with associate professors they're like the best they're like in between they'll give you some time they'll have well established labs as well they'll have contacts as well so i feel you know i mean just i'm giving you an idea that joining an associate professor is obviously great but obviously they, like i told you the reasons that i have given you before they are more important than this particular reason right uh, then uh, one more thing the last thing that should matter about uh, joining a professor is their nature your, your nature and their nature should be very similar right now what I mean by that is that some professors are very quick okay they want quick work to be done and you know um, they keep you under pressure all the time they want you to work from fixed hours like you know some professor want you to come before nine o'clock in the morning like if they come at nine all the students should be there in the lab before nine right now um, if you are if you are that kind of student who is very disciplined and who wants to work from nine to nine and they are okay with it and you also like to work in a fast-paced manner and you are okay with working under pressure there are some students who outperform in pressure and there are some students who underperform in pressure right so i believe that i am a student who underperforms in pressure if you put a lot lot of pressure on me i won't perform right but there are people who outperform like when a lot of pressure is put on them they do really well right so you have to see the nature of the professor as well and how will you come to know the nature when you talk to the students uh, in their lab right so um what i mean by that is like i explained that if the professor wants you to be there before nine and work till nine for example i'm giving you an example it might be work till six five whatever so um if you are disciplined enough that you can come around 8 45 and then you go at 6 6 30 according to uh, your professor's will then you can you know 
your, if you're if you think your nature match matches your discipline your professor wants discipline and he wants you to work in the morning from 8 45 to evening 6 and you you can easily do it then you should definitely join but on the other hand if you are a person who likes to work on his own pace okay uh, who does not want a lot of pressure from the guide then you should choose a professor accordingly right like he or she has no problem if you come at 10 10 30 sometimes you come at 8 in the morning sometimes you come 11 in the morning if he or she gives you the enough enough flexibility to do your work and does not bother you all the time regarding how your work is progressing so bother you all the time is not daily at least if if he's asking if he or she is asking once a week it's totally fine you know so it depends on the pace at which you work and the pace at which your guide works if both match it will be really good okay it does not matter if both of you are fast paced or both of you are a little relaxed um, the quality of work will not be hampered right some people like to work in their own way and the guides let you do that that's an excellent thing okay that's what i believe and if in future if i get a chance um, to become a researcher or academic researcher i'll definitely give the flexibility because i believe that flex giving flexibility is very important uh, for the progress of students right and uh, so yeah these are the some of the important points and yeah there is one more point about joining a new lab right uh, fortunately i have had a lot of experience in this and um, i will let you know after once i complete my phd that how my experience was doing a phd but yeah uh, when you join a new lab there are a lot of things um, there, there are a lot of difficulties you face first of all there is no equipment um, there are no chemicals so you have to get the you have to arrange the chemicals you have to do a lot of administrative work you have to get things done um, so it is very difficult if you are joining a professor who has just got a lab for themselves uh, but you learn a lot in that process right so if you are a person who does not care much about the profile that how many publications they have if you are not a person who judges someone by their profile by the number of publications they have and uh, you know you don't have any problem with that that you know even if you have less publications but you get to learn a lot when you establish a new lab because you get to do all the administrative work apart from the research work which sometimes might be frustrating but you learn a lot right uh, significantly lot so that if you in the future become an academic researcher uh, or a researcher in general um, it would not be very difficult for you to establish a lab because you will be already familiar with the procedures of how to establish a lab right so it might be difficult but then over there you get a lot of flexibility because you are the first person or the second person maybe um, to join that lab so you, you get immense freedom and you get immense time of your guide right because um, so you have a very good rapport or a very good bonding with your guide if you join a new lab because you know um, there is something right you if you if you are their first or second phd it it, it is it is uh, it matters a lot to your guide you have a different kind of connection right so these are some of the things that i would just like to tell you so you, you are now um, uh, you know old enough to take your own decisions but i just wanted to guide you regarding what all things are important and how you can choose the best guide out of uh, all right so take your best decision because your this is one decision that matters a lot right um you should not like you should be very very uh, choosy about it right you should not just go for anyone and you should do your proper research before joining a particular lab right so that's it thank you so much for watching this video and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please give it a big thumbs up and that's it thank you and do share this video uh, it will help a lot of students i i, I feel right thank you